Hello and God bless. This is Neftali. Welcome to God's foreknowledge and election. And today we're going to go to the Word of God so that many of you can understand what my position is on Calvinism and what I actually believe. So if you're an Armenian who's coming to watch this video, I want you to please drop your defense levels down. If you're a Calvinist, the same thing. Many times we go to view videos and we might have our defense levels so high up that um, we're stuck in our position and we don't, we're not willing to listen to anyone bringing forth any information, valuable information to all forth. So I ask you to compare everything I'm telling you with scriptures and to please right now open up your Bible. We're going to look at Romans 9. Romans 9 verse 11. And I'm going to read from the English Standard Version because many of my friends who are Calvinists um, point to me to read here when it comes to reading Romans and because it's easier to understand uh, according to my friends. So, verse 11. Though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works but because of him who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger. Note this is not talking about eternal security. It's, talk, it's talking about serving. It's talking about a nation, a people. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. So we're going to take a look at this Bible verse and we're going to say, why would God love Jacob and hate Esau just like that? I mean, why would God do that? And we have to ask the question, is this something that he simply predestined before the foundations of all of the earth and said, this is what's going to happen, point back, clear it, without taking into consideration what men would actually do with the free gift of salvation that God was giving mankind. But we have to take a look at scriptures for that. We can't simply determine out of one Bible verse and make a doctrine out of it because that's dangerous to do. So, we're going to go to the Bible. Please go to 1 Peter 1, 2. According to the foreknowledge of God in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Here he's talking about foreknowledge. God knows what's going to happen. Nothing surprises God. You don't surprise God with your actions. If you decided to sin today, if you decided to do something incorrect today, that didn't surprise God. God knew it would happen. But nonetheless, that it's not God's fault that it happened. Allowed, God allowed you an opportunity to resist the devil, as James says, and he would have fleed. It's that simple. God gives us opportunities to obey and disobey. Does that mean that we're perfect and we're never going to fall? No, we all fall short of the glory of God. But mankind has a choice to obey or disobey. None of your actions surprise God. God is that sovereign. He's so sovereign that he knows what you're going to do with the free gift that he has given you. That's how awesome he is. He foreknows. In Romans 8, 29, it says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Here it's also talking about those he foreknew. These are Bible verses that are in your Bibles and in my Bible. So we can't simply take Romans 9 without taking in consideration the fact that God foreknows. Because if we do, then we're misrepresenting scripture. The phrase Jacob I have loved and es Esau I have hated deserves a lot of attention. First and foremost, a lot of Calvinists do not even know that this is not an actual account from Genesis. This is actually from the prophet Malachi. So I've asked a lot of Calvinists, well, where is that in the Bible? It's in Genesis. Where in Genesis? I don't know. You have to go to the Word. And the Word of God tells us this is in the book of Malachi. In Malachi 1-2, it says, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou love us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Did I love Jacob and hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness? This is giving you a clue of what God hated. God hated the fact that God foreknew what Esau was going to do. He knew what Esau was going to do with his birthright. And because of so, God set his people, set his land in a different area. Because of what God foreknew Esau was actually going to do. 
Does that mean it was God's fault that Esau did that with his birthright? Absolutely not. It does not mean that. It simply means that God foreknew. That's how sovereign our God is. And this also gives you a clue as to what Romans 9.13 is talking about. It is not talking about the eternal security of Esau. It was actually talking about his heritage, his mountains. In Genesis 25 verse 23 is where you will actually find another Bible verse which actually explains to you clearly that not, Romans 9.13 is not talking about the eternal security of Esau. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. What is it talking about? Two nations. It didn't say two human beings. God referred to them as nations for a purpose. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. They shall be separated. One of the people shall be stronger than the other. Awesome. And the elder shall serve the younger. It's talking about serving. It's talking about people. It's not talking about the eternal security of man. This is in the word of God that we're going to. And I hope that you have your Bibles open. Because if you don't, and you're simply upset at the present moment of what I'm telling you. Without actually having your Bibles open, I urge you to please pause, start all over again, and start reading it with your Bibles open because that's the main thing here. I want you to compare everything with scriptures. Um, I'm only a man, so please make sure you compare everything with scriptures. Now, I have another Bible verse here that's going to shock you. It's going to shock you if you believe that Romans was talking about election of salvation, of the eternal security of a believer. Deuteronomy 2, verse 4. And command thou people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in the seer, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore, middle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a footbreath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for possession. Ye shall buy meat from them for money, that ye may eat. God is beautiful, man. And ye shall also buy water from them that ye may drink. God loved Esau so much that he told them to make sure they bought from them so they can actually eat, so that his people could actually eat. Is this referring to the eternal security of a believer? No. And Deuteronomy 2 verse 4 explains to you that it's not talking about that either. It's talking about his people. That God had mercy on Esau, even though Esau didn't do what was right. God foreknew he wouldn't do what was right. Another thing that's always pointed is the fact that Romans 9.15 talks about the heart of the Pharaoh. And many say, oh, God hardened the heart of the Pharaoh. God can do whatever he wants, and God can do whatever he wants. But if we, we simply say that God hardened the heart of the Pharaoh, we're basically blaming God for what happened when it's not true. Because you have to understand that the, far, the Pharaoh himself hardened his own heart several times. Where? Exodus 7.13. Exodus 7.22 Exodus 8.19 Exodus 9.7 It wasn't until Exodus 9.12 that God stepped in. God foreknew the Pharaoh was going to keep on doing his games. God foreknew that. Because of that, God stepped in and hardened his heart even further. But God is not to blame for the fact that the Pharaoh hardened his heart in 7.14 of Exodus, 7.22 of Exodus, 8.19 of Exodus, Exodus 9.7, Exodus 9.12, it was a Pharaoh himself who hard, hardened his heart before God actually stepped in. And the same thing is happening to mankind today. God is telling mankind, hey, I want to save you. I'm giving you a free gift of salvation. And many are hardening their own hearts and blaming God for that. But we can't blame God. God is an awesome God. God is a sovereign God. Nothing that you or I do can surprise him. He foreknows who will accept that free gift of salvation and who won't. Those who will are called the elect those who won't are called the unsaved god bless you